What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Real quick before questions, we need to give a shout out to Joey Munoz who joined our Patreon at the Jedi Council level. Thank you so much, Joey. That is insanely generous and we very much appreciate your support. Our first question comes from Alex Brennan who asks if the First Order will be completely wiped out by the end of episode nine. I think they probably will. Uh, this is a good question. Like how much of a nice little bow is episode nine going to put on things will the first order still be around like the empire was for a year after the battle of endor and canon or like 20 years after in legends it does seem like it's a really fast war if this if, if the first order is completely gone by the end of episode nine yeah i don't know i it feels like it might turn into the kind of situation where we're at in mandalorian maybe where there's still like warlords and whatnot, maybe a few people left over from the First Order. But I think, yeah, most of them will either be wiped out or maybe just change their mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm still very hopeful for the Stormtrooper revolt. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they're probably going to be destroyed, but maybe not by the Resistance, maybe by Palpatine. Uh, maybe his forces come in and they're like, all right, he's he, the, the First Order has destabilized things enough that now I can swoop in and take over, which was maybe his plan all along. I don't know. It definitely doesn't seem like the Resistance is in a position to completely take out the First Order, but I think they might have like some inadvertent help. Yeah. I also think that, I mean, that's a lot of people to kill. Yeah. In a movie. I mean... The first Death Star, the second Death Star, yeah. millions of people. But we didn't see them. Well, yeah, yeah it's probably going to be something similar. I don't <laughs> think we're going to, like, execute a million people on screen. <laughs> I just think that symbolically, like, maybe we'll see uh, the First Order fleet mm -hmm. d destroyed. And maybe their home world, if they have one, like a, a capital that they set up. Yeah, but but I think overall the First Order itself will be dismantled i think it'll at the very least be like the battle of endor where it's like okay they're in their death throes now and it won't be much longer lorenz markoff wants to know what's something we are 100 percent certain will happen in the rise of skywalker so we're gonna plant some flags here say this is definitely gonna happen no way we're wrong there's no way and i think that for sure 100 percent Anakin Skywalker is going to be in this movie. I, I'm I'm hopeful for Force Ghost Con. I hope all of the Force Ghosts are in the movie, but I'm willing to say 100% Anakin Skywalker will be in the final installment of the Skywalker saga. Mm, okay. Um, Captain Phasma's still alive. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking. 100%. 100%. To he it. says. I'm sticking to it. There's no way. You can be 100% certain. I am. Unless someone told you, and I know they didn't. You can't be 100% certain about Anakin. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, clearly joking on that one, but... Are you? Uh, um, I guess for a more serious answer, I don't know. I, 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 I want to say like Luke will be in it as a Force ghost, but... Well, we know that. Do we, though? Yeah, he straight up said that. Did he, though? He did. When? In an interview. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dark Ray is definitely a vision. Okay. There's... All right. I wish... I wish she were real, but I think 100% vision. That's a good one. Like, I'm still 50-50. I want it to not be a vision, but there's so much going on in these movies. Yeah. Just based on the trailers alone that I'm like, yeah, how are they going to find the time to squeeze Dark Ray into all this and like her fall and then redemption if that happens? I don't know. She could just fall and be in the dark side, but I don't see them going that route. Or if it's like a, a trick or something. She's, yeah. she's doing it to for, as, as some kind of ruse, but I don't know. I, I think you're right. I think <laughs> that's a good guess. Jacob Funtes wants to know if the Imperial Remnant knew what happened to the Imperials that went into the Unknown Regions. So at the end of the Aftermath trilogy, 
uh, some Imperials, some chosen Imperials, got to go into the Unknown Regions where they would eventually start the First Order, and some were left behind, and we're seeing some of them in The Mandalorian. I think they have no idea what happened. I think that they probably realized that they were left behind, uh, and that's it. And now they're just like, well, I'm going to do my own thing and become a warlord like we saw in Legends and has been mentioned in uh, the canon. So, yeah, I think that they probably just knew that they were left behind and were probably angry about it. I, I, yeah, I agree, because if any of them did know that there were still out there like imperial remnants out in the outer rim or whatever uh that would be dangerous for them like if that got out you know that actually reminds me in the poe dameron comic uh we see agent Terex before he joined the first order he was an imperial that was left behind on jakku and then he went off and became like a crime lord and then Eventually, he heard about the First Order and was like, oh, and then he sought them out and joined them. But that was decades later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I would say that that's even more proof that they were just left behind with no idea what to do next. Yeah. And also, like, if people still loyal to the Empire knew about that, they would just stay loyal and not become, you know, like you said, warlords or whatever. Uh, And maybe the First Order... What what's to become of the First Order wants them to have that anger of feeling left behind and just continue to cause trouble and mayhem while they're out there making their own plan. Yeah, I, I bet there were probably a few zealots that were like, like Ray on Jakku, like, they'll come back. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> One day. Like, maybe Moff Gideon and Warner Herzog's character, maybe they're all just sitting there like, anytime now, they'll be back. Yeah. Amit Zohar asks if Maul, Kira, and Crimson Dawn could be antagonists in the Cassian Andor series. I think there's potential for that. Like, I really see a lot of potential for Saw Gerrera to show up uh, in Fist Nest. And in that same time period, yeah, maybe. But it kind of depends on when the show is taking place. And the fact that Alan Tudyk is in it means that it... And this is according to a one-off comic that honestly I didn't think was very good. So they could always just maybe say, that comic doesn't count, and we're kind of redoing this story. But according to that comic, K2SO wasn't reprogrammed until a year before Rogue One. So really, we only have a year to work with. And by then, Maul's already lost control of Crimson Dawn, so he's out. Uh, if Crimson Dawn still exists at all, Kira might have control of it. That could be cool. So, like, I still think that there's room for something like that, mm-hmm. uh, but I think it's unlikely. I would love for Kira to show up, obviously, but yeah, I don't, I don't know about Crimson Dawn. It might be something that's mentioned, or there could be, I don't know, remnants of it as part of the show, but. I think if they're going to do anything with those characters and with Crimson Dawn, hopefully it'll be its own show. Yeah, or, I, hope, I hope so too. Or part of another show that's that's like a bigger, bigger thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that those characters deserve a chance to tell their own story instead of being like, oh, we're popping up in the Kenobi series and we're popping up in the Cassian series. Yeah. I think I'd much rather just get something focused on them. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where we left you a written response. Maybe by now we have the schmo down this weekend. Uh, we're filming this early in the week before we fly out and we'll probably be behind on answering questions, but we will answer your question. Uh, if you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained content, including audio commentaries for the films and for The Mandalorian. And we just put out our commentary for the fourth episode this week. So that's available right now if you're interested. We have also started a podcast that is now available where wherever most podcasts are available. With iTunes, Spotify, Spotify, all those places, all those other places. <laughs> Uh, And we are kind of slowly rolling out just audio versions of our episodes, mostly the Q&As, the Mandalorian breakdowns, mostly the longer uh, long form type episodes. So check that out if you're interested.
On to YouTube questions, Zach Kramers asks, what the chances are that Yoda will eat a frog in the last season of The Clone Wars? Uh, I want to say low, but I, I kind of thought this question was funny just because if he did, people would immediately be like, it is a clone of Yoda. They oh. both like to eat frogs. <laughs> I'm connecting the dots. Like I would just, I kind of hope it does happen just to see the conspiracy theorists <laughs> come out of the woodwork. Is that, I mean, I feel like a, a lot of people eat frogs or gorgs as they are more commonly known as. It doesn't matter. This is the Star Wars fandom. <laughs> They're going to be like, frog, frog. They're the same person. Or Yoda's his dad. Only way they would both enjoy frogs. There's, I mean, there's already a ton of memes out there about child support and Yoda being the dad. <laughs> Deadbeat dad. <laughs> The Bleaker wants to know what Palpatine would have done if the Senate had not accepted the foundation of the Empire. I want to start by saying that I think one of the big points that George Lucas was trying to make is that, uh, and he has straight up said this, is that uh, dictators don't seize power. Like, they don't just take over by force. They are usually given power and that's how liberty dies with thunderous applause. Like Palpatine did this thing where he took a little more and a little more and a little more. And it's kind of like speaking of frogs again, it's like there's that old fable about how if you put a frog in a cold pot of water and slowly boil it, it accepts it. Yeah. It's sad. Uh, but that's kind of what Palpatine was doing is like just a little bit at a time until like I'm a dictator now. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big point of the prequels. But if Liberty hadn't died with thunderous applause and uh, his, his plans didn't work, I think he probably would have then just tried to take it by force. <laughs> like, he may have recreated that fight he has with Yoda throwing Senate pods around, but people are still in them. Yeah, or, or like, gone ahead and activated Order 66 and had the clones... Order 67? And... <laughs> That's yeah. like, kill all the senators? Yeah, or, I mean... Yeah, and the, he would have the Inquisitors at some point, too. So, And like you said, the prequels and also the Clone Wars TV show sets up a ton of stuff. It's like constantly showing us how Palpatine is slowly but surely gaining trust in different areas and, yeah, cre power creep mm -hmm. into the Senate. But we talk about how many backup plans this guy has, so I'm sure... He had a backup plan for like, all right, if they say no thank you to the Empire, then he probably would have like exited the Senate mm -hmm. and then it would have blown up and he'd be like, oh no, a mining accident. <laughs> He's always got that Zillow beast that they may or may not have cloned. <laughs> That's what it was for. Oh man. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that. That's Order 67. He would have like, yeah, pressed a button and a Zillow beast would have like torn into the Senate building from the ground and just killed all the senators and Palpatine's like, oh no. <laughs> Grillo Sama asks if the comics will cover the Bothans getting information about the second Death Star. I bet we will because the main Star Wars run has just reached Hoth and then we're going to like reboot the series, start back over with Star Wars number one by Charles Soule, huzzah. And then we're going to go in between Empire and Jedi. And yeah, that feels like something worth covering. Although I say that, and I also thought that uh, Han going to Ord Mantell and running into a bounty hunter, that would probably be something worth showing too. And they haven't done it yet. They might do it in the Empire Ascendant comic that comes out later this month. But Yeah, I agree. I think it's possible. Uh, Bothans are one of those things that a lot of people have kind of attached to, and they're kind of clamoring. They're like, when are we going to go see the whole Bothans thing. And I think that would be an interesting story to tell. Um, so, yeah. We also it, just haven't seen a Bothan yet in the new canon. Right, exactly. <laughs> and there's like a, a Twitter account that's called, Is it a Bothan? Is it a Bothan? And every, every time something that kind of looks like a Legends Bothan shows up in canon, they just say, I don't know, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Lord Sheeman wants to know how bounty hunters keep tracking the child. <laughs> that and worked out. Uh, yeah, and I think this is one of those things. I don't know if they're going to explain this or not, because it, it it would be hard to explain 
And also, like, it would take too long. Whenever, I, I bet at some point, maybe we'll get, like, the Mandalorian Visual Dictionary, and maybe they'll get into it, but whatever it is, I bet it's going to be very hand-wavy. This is just a storytelling device. It's just like hyperspace. Like, George Lucas didn't care about how hyperspace worked in the original Star Wars movies. It didn't matter. He was like, I need a way for people to travel across the galaxy in a matter of minutes. Hyperspace it is. Like, that's just a thing that it exists now, and it's basically magic. Even in its, like, explanations, it's like, it's just a magical thing. This is technology, yes, but I think it's just... Somehow, this thing can track certain people. I would guess that the Empire had something to put into these trackers. I think he's chipped. He might be. It depends on where he came from. I mean, that would be the easiest explanation, I think, for them to give is like, he's got a chip in him like a dog or a cat might have, and that's how they track him. Yeah, so maybe they will get into that in the latter half of this season uh but i kind of am not expecting them to i think it's just a way to keep the mandalorian and the child in danger and that's it and there has to be some way for the bounty hunters to find them and this is it and that's kind of all that matters yeah nathan welk asks if we'll ever see any more anthology films like rogue one or solo i think probably not the way that we've been hearing about the new movies, although well, I say this, but Kevin Feige apparently just has one movie he's working on. Uh, the Ryan Johnson trilogy is out there. Even if the Benioff Weiss trilogy has been, I don't know, it's hit some speed bumps. <laughs> I don't think it's straight up canceled. I think they're still going to cover that story, which the the rumor, word on the street, whatever, is that they were going to do The Origin of the Jedi. That sounds perfect for a trilogy of movies. I think that they're probably going to do that. Um, And I think that all of the movies are going to cover those really big events in Star Wars history and what may have at one point been uh, an anthology like Solo or Kenobi. Kenobi was originally going to be a movie. I think all those smaller stories are going to shift into Disney Plus series. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they're going to go a little bit nuts with Disney Plus shows for a while because Mandalorian is doing great. Everybody's psyched for Kenobi. And I think they'll have at least one or two more shows come out like that. But I don't know. I think eventually, depending on the subject matter, we'll get another one-off movie that's yeah i was starting to talk before thinking about the kevin feige movie and and it might be hmm. something related to one of the shows that'll be on disney plus or it might be another clone wars movie type thing where it's animated and it's maybe for kids i don't know um the the, the kevin feige thing is now making me rethink that if there is a story big enough uh then yeah, I think they will do a one-off movie. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. And like, yeah, Rogue One, that does feel like a movie to me uh, and not a series. Yeah. But Solo, I think, could have very well been broken into six to eight episodes and put on Disney Plus instead. Do you think Plagueis would be a good, like a, a small enough story to tell in a movie or does that need its own like show or series of books or something because <laughs> well, he, he just had one book yeah a very good book i i keep thinking that we're going to get some sort of plagueis content at some point and i i keep thinking it'll probably be a book series but maybe that'll be a movie plagueis and sheev <laughs> <laughs> i hope that's the title uh so I'm, I'm trying to think if just the title darth plagueis or the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. That's too long. If Darth Plagueis were to be the title of a movie, is that a big enough draw? Because I think the more casual fan that just goes and watches the movies, they're probably at least aware of the meme to mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think if my parents would be like, oh yeah, Darth Plagueis. I don't think they'd remember who <laughs> Darth Plagueis is. But the word Darth might be enough Yeah. to like garner some interest from the more casual moviegoers. Or like we were talking about earlier, Crimson Dawn. Yeah. That 
I still see as a series, I think. Yeah. But Plagueis, yeah, you might be onto something there. Or like Star Wars, the underworld. I don't know. They, they, there's a million different ways to call it, uh, but I, I, I just something like Rogue One. <laughs> yeah. Where it is connected to what we know. Like I think a trilogy is gonna have to be really big to stand on its own feet. Mm-hmm. A one-off, I think, would have to be somewhat connected to the familiar to be marketable enough. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm trying to think of other events like Rogue One where we know this thing happened. We've known since A New Hope and The Crawl, and we get to see that story now. So I don't know. I'm sure there's something out there. There definitely is. (laughs) That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion and get access to our Mandalorian commentaries. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, And may the Force be with you.